do you have a favourite wine? Mine would be something full-bodied and oaky, <laughs> with undertones of rich sacrifice. Well, that's the essence of the new wine. That's Jesus. We've been really enjoying exploring the royal realms of eating and drinking over the last few episodes. It really has been the most fascinating subject that seems to have depreciated in value in the church significantly over the years. But here at the Worship Effect, we are quite partial to a glass of wine. So pour yourself your favourite tipple or sweet cup of tea and let's go on a joy journey. Wine and alcohol in general have long been the domain of the so-called overlooked and overcooked in society. All too often we associate the words drunkenness and intoxication with a rowdy rabble on a Saturday night or even the immoral behaviour of the sexually promiscuous. Been there, done that, and to be honest folks, I lived to tell the tale and by God's grace, I came out the other side full of the joy of the Lord. Cheers! <laughs> so, why have we turned drinking into something that is bad for us? Let me tell you a little story. Going back over a hundred years ago, Wales was known for its mining community. Men spent long and hard days down the mines working just to keep a roof over their families' heads and food on the table. But the everyday grind of the mines took its toll and the men found a way to alleviate these pressures. Alcohol. It became the drink of escapism. The church was mostly made up of women and children whilst the men made up the numbers in the pubs. But things were about to change. Come the 1904 revival in Wales, whole families were getting saved. But how do you change a culture of drinking? Well, the church shunned alcohol and even preached it as the devil's vomit. This didn't help the men who were knee deep in dirt and muck at work day in, day out. They needed a culture of joy, but instead the church offered a culture of soberness, discipline, and even control. The revival went as quickly as it came and the men resumed their drinking culture and saw the cycle repeat itself again and again. Church and drinking have and are still viewed by many believers as opposing each other. But has this aided in people getting saved and living a fulfilled Christian life or has it ended with people choosing drinking over Jesus? Take a look around, folks. What do you see? Now, let's cast our minds back to the first miracle that Jesus performed. Turning the water into wine, of course. We all know it well. Jesus is at a wedding with his mum and his mates, and the wine runs out. I repeat, the wine runs out. You can imagine that the feast master was probably absolutely sweating buckets at this point. But then, Jesus, he turns the water from the six stone jars, usually used for ceremonial cleansing, into wine. Wine that was so sweet, so juicy, so tantalisingly divine that the feast master starts to rave about how the best has surely been saved for last. So, riddle me this, folks. Why, if Jesus turned water into wine, why, if the best has been saved to last, why... Have we been trying to change it back ever since? Look, I know this is challenging, but if we don't take wine, something that according to Judges 9.13 brings joy to God and man and use it for joy and to lift up and celebrate the glory of God in our lives as new creation beings, then... Darkness will inevitably take over. 
Cool all the verses about the acts of the flesh with which we should all be very familiar in some way, shape or form. It's sin, it's grim, it's so far removed from God's intention for us and for that heavenly joy juice. The wine is alive, folks. Jesus is the new wine. Fiery wine, blood aflame. Kindle this feast, mesmerise me again. I savour your delights, ignited, ablaze in seer and love. I burn for more of this smouldering spread of satisfying sacrifice to which I am invited, succulent, full fat love for a heavenly appetite that swallows your light. Your satiating body, blood, life Communion with my friend, father, lord and saviour My Jesus Christ So, Katie Face I have got three glasses of wine One <laughs> that's a really cheap wine Right Right so, okay. I got one that's mid-range price-wise and I got one expensive. But by whose yes. level you go in? Because expensive it's, to me. <laughs> it's by my purse. Oh, <laughs> darling. <laughs> which isn't much. Go no. on. <laughs> right. So I want you to say. I want you to tell me which one you think is the cheapest, the mid range, and the most expensive. Bring so it on. So go for that one first. Do you want me to do the old sniff and go on? I don't know what they're doing really. You should gargle and spit, but we want to that as oh, yeah. straight down the arch. <laughs> okay. You might recognise that taste. I a bit do, more. I do. I think I've had what, that. What a do bit. you think? What wine do you think that is? It's nice and sweet. Yeah. I think it's the cheap one. Right, okay. Now try that. But then we have had a few glasses already. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Does it smell good? Oh, flipping Nora, that is strong. Yeah. Right, okay, I need to taste the other one right. first before okay. I compare. Okay, that's the last one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm sniffing it, like, as if I know what I'm doing, yeah, yeah. but I got a really you bad... Can, you can tell a lot by smiling it, about its price, where it is. Now, I quite like that one. Yeah. Let's have another... Let's have another bit, just to be sure. <laughs> Check that up there. Right. I've got to admit, that was my favourite smell coming off that one. No. Smell wise, right. no, right. Let's see, right? Okay, so which one do you Least. think this? The so cheapest. that's the cheapest. You were correct, that's the cheapest. I know cheap wine, right? Now, don't... between these two, which one do you think is the mid to now, expensive? I gotta make, I've gotta try and make a difference between what I preferred right. and what you're actually asking so, me. Yeah. No, which, which one tossed the most? That one. She got it right! Yes! <laughs> and I, that's the one I like the least! <laughs> See? But this is the most expensive. It's actually the one that I, I like this. the most. And this one is Christmas mulled wine, cheapest chips, £3. <sighs> Happy days. Mulled wine but, in <laughs> summer. <laughs> it's great, but it just goes to prove the show, right? About when Jesus saved the best to last. Yeah. You can smell when something yeah. is good. Yeah. I Even do. if it's not your personal taste. Yes. It still smells expensive. Something about it. It smells yeah. costly. It smells of value. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So sometimes you just have to be like, okay, put your personal taste to one side and just appreciate the value of something. So can we use this for communion wine? <laughs> <laughs> See what I can do. Seriously with. though, communion, <laughs> it's always a bit grim sometimes. You have right. the end of a service. Yes. And they put a slow song on the worship band, strike up something that's really just reverent and really just mulling things over. Yeah. But traditionally, it, yeah. it was like a proper joyous occasion. Oh, totally. What, why in the church have we just taken communion to something that is a bit more elevating death than life? Yeah. Negates the whole... Totally. Well, do you know what it is? So the church wants to be separate from the world and we see that the pubs and the drinking culture, it, we've got to separate ourselves from that. But really what we've got to do is redeem it. Yeah. You know, Take so it it's not back. separating ourselves from that. It's right. actually redeeming it back to its original form of what God intended it to be. Yeah. And it's intended yeah. to be joyous. Merriment. Merriment, fullness. Yeah. Happiness, yeah. that contentment that you have when yeah. you're with your friends in church, worship going. You, you know, you've got Jesus in mind, you're drinking and remembering the covenant he made with That's you. That's right. It's I, an awesome thing. And you know what? We all too often think of God as this massive tyrant yeah. on his throne. And, and he is, he's, he's judge, he's judge, he is yeah. sovereign, but he's happy. I know. <laughs> and he looks at yeah. us 
thinking like yeah. you do with your children. Yeah. You think, oh wow, you know they're crazy, <laughs> but I love yeah. them. You know, he is a happy and joyful God, yeah. and he's given us something to enjoy. Yeah. So we should do be of a like mind. Totally. But I, I love it. Um, I've enjoyed this anyway. I've enjoyed it. I'm gonna just go what away do I, and drink all what the. What do I win? <laughs> what do I win? What do you win? You win the rest I, of the yeah. bottle. <laughs> I don't know where they are. You win the rest of the melt wine, your favourite. Thank you. Thanks, love. Happy days. Cheers. Let me be clear here. We are not advocating sin. And neither are we telling you to go out and consume so much alcohol that you throw up everywhere and need your mother to change you into your PJs. Like someone I used to know. I'm a new creation in Jesus. <laughs> But what we are advocating is joy, pure and powerful joy. And now I'm back, back on the flag. Don't look surprised that I'm still singing because you know I have a knack. Can you believe so whether it be alcoholic or non-alcoholic, Tesco finest grown from your very own vineyard made in the garden shed or a sweet brew poured straight from the kettle. Join us as we lift a glass and say Lachaim to life. Or in Welsh, Yechida good health. And become intoxicated with the joyful message of the new wine together. Cheers! 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 <laughs> <laughs>been fed and watered next week join us as we discover who we are and the sweetness of resting in jesus